Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 
session we had learned about we are not the body we are spirit soul isn't it we are the atma and we are not the material body in fact material body is like a car and the spirit soul is like uh, uh, the driver of the car based on this very important uh, reality that lord krishna explained in this in this series of verses Mm. we are going to learn one another very very practical and vital lesson for life today uh, if we if we can successfully learn it and implement it you know you can do away with so many challenges in life that comes your way mm. many times we we are crushed by them we are slapped by them we are pounded by them we are buried by them and they also enter into our minds and they cause so many problems for us so let us see how uh, this session appeals to you you will see that i'll just uh, open the session just a minute i'll just share it you can see it now Yes. It is called as fruits of doing duty despite difficulty. So, the eligibility. Uh, this is actually eligibility for liberation is to tolerate happiness and distress, which is not permanent, and which arises from sense perception. So, you will see that this is the famous verse. You can repeat up to me. मात्रास्पर्शास्तु कौंतेय शीतोष्ण सुख दुखदा आगमापायिनो नित्यास्तिस्वत Please, one of you read the translation, please. Yeah. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress, and their disappearance in due course, are like the appearances, appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense of perception, O sign of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So 
uh, why he is using the word non permanent appearance i will tell you the reason there was a king who announced to all his citizens that if anybody can give me a special birthday gift she will get the first prize and i will give you a great fortune huh? i'll give you some something like in a 1 million dollar i'll give you but the gift should be a very unique gift it may not be a very costly gift but it must be a very unique gift he said so many many people gave many gifts to the king but one man gave a gift which was very appealing to the king you know what was it he gave him a ring in that ring it was engraved this too shall pass away it was written so it was a very meaningful gift because the king understood whenever he was happy he would look at the ring this too shall pass away and then he immediately understood that i should not become proud of my happiness because any time this happiness will pass away yeah. similarly whenever there was suffering in his life he would look at the ring again this too shall pass away yes suffering also will pass away so then he would not become depressed so in suffering he didn't become depressed in happiness he didn't become proud because he knew that happiness and suffering is non permanent appearance uh, they are not permanent uh, happiness and distress they come and go uh, like when the night comes and you see the night you are not worried because you know that sun will rise in the morning night is not permanent uh, when there is night there is going to be day similarly when there is suffering there is going to be happiness also uh, similarly Uh, the duality these are called dualities uh, duality means pleasure pain day night honor dishonor uh, summer winter so they are called dualities so when these dualities come in our life how do we take them uh, that is the, that is the main uh, topic uh, because this this is a very important topic because when you understand it i will just show you one uh, just one minute yeah so i'll just share with you another ppt i want to show you you can see this now huh? see are you confident or are you overwhelmed there like one girl this girl is she is confident and other girl is overwhelmed there because of too many subjects to study how do how do we face dualities in life here you see sometimes we are healthy sometimes we are sick sometimes we are happy sometimes we hear some bad news we are unhappy sometimes we get a a grade sometimes we get a f grade you are unhappy sometimes your business is skyrocketing sometimes <laughs> due to covid see the covid is shown behind the business is nose diving uh, sometimes sometimes somebody respects you and everybody salutes you sometimes someone insults you um, you are living in a world where both are possible sometimes you know we are jolly with our near and dear one we are very happy but then sometimes the near and dear one passes away uh, plunging us into suffering uh, sometimes our life is like this a smooth sailing boat but other times our life is like this like a storm uh, so sometimes calm sometimes storm uh, so both types of situations come in our life uh, so that's what our krishna teaches arjuna hope for the best and be prepared for the worst yes so now i showed you the different dualities that we all come across in life now what is the importance of this topic to your spiritual life see there are people who lose their steadiness in spiritual life as soon as some problem comes like one boy i asked him why you didn't come for the weekly program said so exams are coming he said so i stopped coming okay later on i asked why you didn't come the in the last month why you didn't come he said oh i after the exams i went to rome with my friends we went for trekking i didn't get time you know i became very busy 
Then I asked, now why you are not coming? Oh, Prabhu, many relatives have come to my home. I'm, I got super busy with my friends and relatives. Huh? So every week he had some reason to miss. Which means it clearly shows that for him, spiritual life is not very important. Huh? For, for him, many, he has many other priorities in life. So such people, yes, they do benefit a little bit whenever they come and learn something. And uh, for them, spiritual life is a side thing. They take it quite casually. And uh, their life becomes uh, hurry burry, huh? uh, hazil bazil, you know, running to do so many things in life. Huh? Actually, we should know that our term in the material world where we are living is temporary. You know, everyone is given an expiry date at the time of birth. You know, it's written on our forehead by Brahma. It's called Brahma Lipi, we call it. Hmm? Brahma writes, you have Alpayush or a Madhyayush or a Dirgayush. Alpayush means some, some people live only for 30 years only, less than 30. Some people live between 30 to 60. Some live between 60 to 90. You know? So it's not that everybody is going to live till 100. Uh, yeah. So well, one should be uh, aware uh, that uh, anytime, you know, one may have to leave this uh, situation anytime. Like uh, COVID came and some people had to leave the situation. Isn't it? Yeah. Similarly, uh, one is the death and any time situations can change. So, therefore, one should not have uh, uh, all the time preoccupation in such a way that spiritual life suffers. Now, I told you a very simple situation for this boy. Now, for example, plus minus happens in our life. Like exam results came poor, so I will not uh, chant Hare Krishna now. You know, some, sometimes people think like that. Or my business uh, had a financial crunch. So then I will not chant Hare Krishna. So in this way, if a spiritual life goes for a toss because of small, small dualities. I went to the Iskwan temple, some devotee, you know, he scolded me or something for something. I committed some mistake. Yeah. So if somebody thinks like that, so then what happens? Oh, somebody respects me, I appreciate. Somebody doesn't respect me, I become moody. So then, it, uh, then spiritual life will not be able to continue very nicely. Mm. Yeah. And because the soul doesn't suffer actually. Soul is aloof inside the bodily car. Say for example, somebody bet your car with a hammer and produce a dent. You know, you are inside the car. You definitely have to take action on him. Uh, but you don't have to become morose about it. Mm. You have to take action, surely, whatever is to be done. Yes, you you can take him to task. Yeah, by calling the police and then he has to pay the fine. You have the right to do that. Yeah. So, uh, there may be n number of reasons in this world, ups and downs, which will come like I showed you the waves of the ocean. So, what Lord Krishna says is, my dear friend, if you want to attain the ultimate goal of life, to go back to Godhead, Mm. Don't let these dualities come in your way and keep your spiritual focus on. I will ask all of you a simple question. Say you are in a room, in a room where suddenly you find a fire is breaking out from all sides. Huh? And there is a hole in the top of the room. Huh? And you are looking around, how can I jump out of that hole? When you are looking around, you find the ladder in the room. So you take the ladder and you put the ladder and you want to climb up and get out of the room. At that time, some boy is ridiculing you. Ha, 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 ha. Somebody is teasing you. Or somebody is yelling at you, criticizing you. So you have a choice. Either to get down in the ladder and uh, fight with the boy who is ridiculing you or fight with the boy who is you know, criticizing you, yelling at you. Or you can just climb up and get out of the you know, fiery room where fire is coming from all sides. Which one will you do? Okay, how many of you will not mind who is ridiculing you and who is yelling at you? You will just climb up and get out of the room. How many of you will do that? Let us take a vote. Okay, we have Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. Yeah, Shravan also says that, okay. Shravan Balaji, Nitya Gopal Prabhu. Yeah, Himanshu, okay. Okay, Upen also, okay. Okay.
That good number. Uh, Alec also. Alec agreed. Okay. Oh, most of them have agreed. Okay. Is there anyone who says, no, 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 I will first uh, uh, get back on them? Anybody? You can raise your hand. You will have to get back on those fellows who are ridiculing you or, you know, who is yelling at you. Anybody here? You would do, do, do that? Because certainly your life is more dear for you than, you know. So here he is saying, uh, Jacob is saying, but this applies to us uh, uh, too uh, with, in spiritual process, my friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So why do we climb up? Yes, Srinath, all of them have agreed. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it would be uh, foolishness for us to stay back and be fighting with those people because along with them, we will also be burned uh, in the fire. So we should, we should get out. Similarly, uh, in this world also, somebody disrespects me. I take it too seriously. I become very moody. I develop a revengeful attitude in my mind. That fellow spoke, I'm not going to leave him. I'm going to get back on him. When you develop hatred in your heart, it's like taking a red hot coal in the hand and running behind them. Uh, then we burn our own hands. Uh, that person is running away anyway. Uh, so we all have to see, you know, how to respond to the situations in this world. Somebody will praise me, somebody will insult me, uh, somebody will give me pleasure, somebody will give me pain. Mm -hmm. So these situations, that is the main point of this uh, verse we are discussing today. Uh, this, is, this is the main theme here in this, which, which is coming up here. Okay, let us go back to that shloka. Yeah. Mm. You see, Prabhupada writes in the purport, prescribed duties are essential for spiritual advancement, uh, which means fulfill your material desires in a regulated means. For example, sometimes we, we eat food, too much food we eat. Uh, sometimes when we get sick also. And uh, sometimes the, the chase after the mirage of sex life, uh, one can become mad after that. So therefore, there's a regulated lifestyle kept for a person that, yes, you can marry one woman and live with her peacefully, bigger children, and then raise them in God consciousness. Eh? Live peacefully. That's called regulated life. Irregulated means a man is changing dozen partners, eh? you know, because he's greedy for more and more sex life. He's just changing partners. And by that, what happens? His life is ruined. He's, uh, he's neither happy uh, nor he's healthy. Eh? Similarly, food also. Therefore, the Vedic literature prescribes regulated lifestyle in everything. I have spoken about this before, if you remember. You know, it's called as uh, sanctioned, sanctified, and regulated. Uh, like vegetarian food is sanctioned. And offering to Krishna and taking prasadam is sanctified. And eating it in moderate proportion without overeating. That is regulated. So, and similarly, gradually we can detach ourselves from bodily concept of life over a period of time, if you read such a life. And then we can raise, it rises us to the platform of knowledge. You see the picture. There are four classes of people. Brahman, Chatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, which means teachers, you know, uh, administrators like the Chatriyas, and traders and artisans. And also, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyas. That means the student life, married life, and uh, retired, retired life, and renounced life. Uh -huh. So, these are called these are called ashrama, Brahmacharya ashram, Grihastha ashram, Vanaprastha ashram, and this is called Varna. So this is prescribed for uh, people to gradually advance in spiritual life, you know? and uh, this also teaches them how to tolerate these things. You know? For example, as you see in the picture here, hmm, uh, I am going to tell you about four types of tolerance. You know? The first type of tolerance we are learning here is Vega Sahishnuta, Vacho Vegam, Manasa Krodha Vegam. See the pictures, blah, 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 somebody is speaking, that is Vacho Vegam. People have a tendency to be like a chatterbox, eh? talk unnecessary things. We have to tolerate that urge and control that urge. Secondly, Manasa Vegam, which means urges of the mind. Look at that head filled with so many desires. Eh? I want this, I want that. and So many desires one is having eh? in the mind. Some are good, some are bad. And the third picture is a man is beating on the table with an ugly face. You know? That is Krodha Vegam. He's very angry. Vacha Vegam, Manasa Vegam, Krodha Vegam. 
and then the right side picture of man is eating the burger or uh, you know that uh, junk food in big quantity that is jihwa vegam is unable to control his tongue and uh, next one a man with big obesity that is udara vegam he eats and eats and eats a lot more than what his body needs uh, yeah and then the below one which is shown a man is sucked by the magnet and that's why woman is standing which means he is attracted by sex life huh? so <clears throat> and then left of that we have shown a picture of you know tongue belly and genitals are in one line if you control the tongue we can control the belly if you control the belly you can control the genitals so these are six areas we have to control and those who don't control that situation is like this chariot uh, which is drawn by the five horses five senses are running in five different directions huh? and he has lost the control look at the driver huh? the driver is intelligence the ropes are the mind and the horses are the senses so when the senses go wild they are uncontrolled then mind and intelligence also are dragged and the soul is the passenger sitting behind and he suffers so is this clear to everybody so this is called as you know vega sahishnuta six vegams we have to control huh? yeah uh, is it is it clear to everybody anybody has any question on this this is from a famous book called as uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, actually the it was the writing about the chariot was uh, that is from the katopanishad that example uh, example is from the katopanishad uh, upanishadic uh, verse it is about uh, rati hmm, about the chariot and the verse which i told you vacha vegam manasa vegam krodha vegam that verse is from the nectar of instruction upadesha amrita by shri rupa goswami first verse hmm. yeah here is a question are some of the diseases from the past life yeah some of them come from the past life also yeah correct some of the diseases come from the past life also yeah mm-hmm. and some from the current life also we have mm-hmm. but we have to restrain them mm-hmm. then only you know by that vega section we have to control the vegams see some vegams should not be controlled also for example if you have a urge to pass stool one should not control that one should immediately go to ashram and clear the belly immediately hmm? one should not restrain that one wants to pass urine one should not control it one should release it immediately hmm? similarly if there is some sinus in your nose nose is blocked with mucus one should immediately cleanse, cleanse the nose by by throwing it out because these are called as mala in sanskrit mala means these are impurities they should be we should not control them we should throw them out hmm? they are not needed by the body they are they have to be removed whereas the other six vegams i showed you they have to be controlled these have to be controlled vacha vegam marasa you know urge to speak mind's demands anger and then urges of the tongue belly and genitals these things should be controlled this is called vega sahishnuta then the second one is called as dvandva sahishnuta is shita ushna sukha dukha is says anapama so here you find that dvandva means i already told you pleasure and pain like you see this fellow smiling this fellow is crying and at the top you see uh, one uh, one lady sitting in the front of the fan that is due to the heat and this fellow is shivering from cold <laughs> these are extremes huh? so i uh, able to tolerate the heat and cold but, but somebody may say it is so cold now i cannot chant in the morning i have you know today is a freezing cold day temperature is very low i am not going to chant huh? or somebody may say oh, it is so hot so i will not chant somebody may say huh? or somebody may say somebody pointed finger to me i am moved out now so i will not chant hmm? or somebody may say oh this fellow this boy shouted at me i am totally shattered for one week i will not chant hari krishna or i will not go to devotees so in this way we can see that you know this is called as dvandva sahishnuta i have already explained to you i showed you the other pictures correct na no? sometimes you succeed in the exam sometimes you fail in the exam sometimes you skyrocket in business or nose dive in business so this up and down in life should not affect our spiritual duties that's material duties and spiritual duties that means our duties should go unaffected that is krishna's point hmm? that's what he's saying let us proceed to the next one third one here is an example of one great king called as rahugana i'll tell you briefly the long story cut short you know <clears throat> 
see this uh, uh, this is story of one great soul called bharat maharaj uh, jada bharata you know uh, this jada bharata internally he was a great devotee uh, externally he pretended to be a dull and deaf man hmm. here you find one one king had some uh, he was going in a palanque when you see in the left side picture hmm. they needed uh, the uh, palanquin lifters the uh, working men they wanted some help so they saw this jarabharata in the forest and they engaged him hey come and lift the uh, palanquin when he was lifting he saw the ants moving so because he was a pure devotee of the lord he didn't want to put his foot on the ants he moved this way that way and the palanquin moved this way that way hmm. and the king became angry and shouted at him hey i can punish you uh, like uh, the superintendent of death punishes the sinful people like that i can punish you how can you do like this at that time uh, uh, this fellow this jadabharata spoke up he said my dear sir you, know, you are saying you are master i am servant next life i can be master and you may be servant and you are calling me as a fat one the soul is neither fat nor thin and the soul is spiritual so like that when he spoke very wisely immediately the king came out of the palanquin and fell on the ground and offered him obeisances and told him eh? oh great soul uh, i made you lift my palanquin i am sorry huh? i never knew who you are huh? please tell me who you are you are speaking such words of wisdom that means initially king insulted him later on he gave him respect correct no you see that similarly you find uh, the same jadabharata at one time uh, you know when he was walking in the forest some decoits caught him and they thought that we will give him as a sacrifice to kali and kali mata is actually the material energy personified in the picture it is shown here you will see on the right side you see this blue one is a kali with multiple hands you know they they offered him a garland they gave him you know very nice delicious food to eat they gave him pleasures like that and they they offered him a silken cloth everything they gave him and then after making him eat everything they took him and put him on a stone and they were about to cut his head <clears throat> at that time the deity of the personified metal energy kali she jumped out and then she took the same chopper from the hands of decoits and cut off the heads of all the decoits and she also expanded into multiple forms as you see in the picture here and all these uh, associates of kali were drinking the blood from the coming from the necks of those uh, thieves and the thieves were shocked but they couldn't escape she killed all of them uh, saying that you fools you know this is a great devotee of the lord jadabharata how can you do this to him mm. so now after the jadabharata walked ahead so now what is the connection of this to our topic today mm. you will see that jadabharata you know they first gave him pleasure by giving him nice food nice garland nice silken cloth they offered him respect then later on they take they took a chopper and gave him pain by trying to cut his head and he didn't protest can you imagine how powerful he must be a great devotee of god so in pleasure and pain he remained you know he had the equipoised nature uh, yeah he remained true to himself in both yeah and uh, whether it is the palanquin he was given respect or disrespect here he was given pleasure and pain he always remained in the steady state so that is these are extreme examples uh, we find hmm. third one is called as para mata sahishnuta tolerating the opinion of others here you see there's a conflict between two groups two teams here we have shown like a tug of war uh, similarly see the right side picture they both are arguing and that fellow is becoming very disturbed uh, you know is getting wild so you find that when somebody is expressing a different opinion than ours then we get disturbed also by that uh, we get wild by that so we have to tolerate others opinions can any of you tell me why will you tolerate others opinions yes why should we tolerate the opinion of others it 
it's a uh, Hare Krishna word. It's temporary and uh, that opinion is not about the soul. It's about the body. Uh -huh. Okay, the opinions are temporary. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that? Anybody else? Not to get engaged with them. Okay. Because by engaging with them and arguing with them, a lot of time will be wasted. So sometimes somebody expresses opinion, you just, uh, you don't bother about, okay, that's your opinion, it's my opinion, we go ahead. Okay, for example, you, know, you are telling somebody that Ayurvedic medicines are very healthy, please take. And he says, no, 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 allopathic medicines are very fast, he says. Hmm. Yeah, somebody says, huh? uh, like here he says, we aren't always correct either, but uh, you shouldn't let others sway yourself. Okay, good point. See, if you are saying Ayurvedic medicines are good, huh? Good point. Srinath made a point. Listening will help to understand what is their perspective. Okay. Nice point it is. Yeah. That means we can have, uh, we can lend our ears to see what others say from their angle of view. We don't have to close our mind and ears to that. And we can express our opinion. And we have to know that God has made us all uniquely. So everybody will have a different opinion. And we can express our opinion in a team and be detached. I have done my part. They will do their part. And we shouldn't excessively get angry if somebody says a different opinion. For example, I like Ayurvedic medicines, for example. If somebody is going for allopathy medicine, I can't say that he is foolish. Because Srila Prabhupada said, do the needful. Mm. Whatever is needed, you do that. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yes, you may learn something new by finding out why they have different opinion. By, by keeping open-minded. So, very good answers have come from all of you. That means, you know, by keeping mind uh, open, you can be peaceful to chant our Hare Krishna. Huh? You can peaceful, you can be peaceful, do your practice spiritual life. But if somebody becomes deeply hurt by others having different opinion, how can others not listen to my opinion? That attachment to our opinion, it takes our mind totally away and we won't be able to do our spiritual practices. Huh? Yeah. And this is the fourth one, Para Utkarsha Sahishnuta. Not able to tolerate the uh, other people's progress. Huh? He's saying, I'm a bit jealous, he says. Like Dhritarashtra was also jealous of, you know, the Pandavas. Huh? That means the inability to tolerate others' progress. Huh? So I have a question to all of you. If you find that you and your friend came at the same time, but you see your friend booming in business and making a lot of money, having a big car, big bungalow, you both studied in the same college. Huh? What would you do? Okay, here Jacob has made a point. He's saying, I started doing Ayurveda medicine after modern medicine failed me. Daily neem, turmeric, honey, lemon, drink, and ginger helped me a lot. And you are right, uh, Jacob. Now, although Jacob is right, and this is true, I also agree with Jacob also. I also take only Ayurvedic medicine, but it takes some time, some time to convince other people and, and uh, sometimes even after you tell them, they don't agree. Yeah? So what we do, we tell them, you know, this is my experience and if you have a different experience, you can decide and we leave it to them. That means let people decide what they want to do for their life. We can express our opinion and be detached. That's the point. Huh? Yeah. Now I was asking one more question now to all of you that uh, if somebody is progressing, uh, fastly and uh, you are not able to progress like the way they are progressing, what thoughts will come in your mind? And you both studied in the same college, you joined the same company and that person is like given promotion and uh, you, you think he is not so smart but how is he able to get promotion and I am not given. Yeah, I feel like a failure and a loser. Uh, so, okay, Jacob says you should be grateful for whatever you receive, he says, okay. Uh, but some people feel like a failure or a loser. What would you do? And that affects your spiritual life also. You think, why Krishna has not uh, made me progress like that fellow you feel? Yash Patel, please tell me. Yeah, sometimes you start questioning or uh, sometimes, you know, even if you start, uh, you're regularly attending temples and everything, you'll stop, you'll start questioning God. Yeah. Like, okay, why in my life only I'm doing this, even if I'm a devotee of a God? Ah. <laughs> I, think that's right. me, right? I, I think that's the most common things we have seen. Yeah. Especially <laughs> people who are visiting temples and everything, they'll start questioning things, right? So right. Like, why is it happening to me when I'm, uh, you know, on the path of bhakti? Yes. Or uh, I'm 
you know, worshiping God daily, right? I'm doing Japa yeah. Mala. Yeah, day. correct. Why, why just me? Why not this guy, right? Or why not yeah, anyone? Correct. So they ask like that. So what would be an ideal answer uh, to tell anybody that why that fellow is progressing and you are not progressing? Why? If somebody asks, what would you tell them? So it, in terms of, um, you know, by reading Gita, Prabhuji, uh, one thing I've come to understanding is like, uh, you know, uh, whatever God has given us, right, is due to our past karmas and also the karmas we're creating right now, right? So instead of looking uh, on other people and doing comparison game, like, okay, this guy's making, um, you know, uh, 60 lakh rupees per year or 80 yeah. lakh rupees per year, and I'm only stuck on 40 lakh rupees, right? Yeah. But the G, right, the uh, people, uh, we are not grateful that we're living healthily, right? Uh, we can see, we can eat, uh, we have no issues, health issues or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And instead, we can even pray to God, right? We can do uh, bhakti without any... Um, any anything coming our way, right? Uh, um, so saying that he actually is telling us that you see what you have rather than seeing what you don't have, uh, and be happy with what God has given you, and be grateful for what you have, you know, and your good health, and uh, you have decent amount of money. In India, you may not have so much. In America, you are having a good amount of money now. Forty lakhs is good, and he may have six lakhs. I don't care about it, but I am happy. Krishna has put me in a good situation. Like that, one can think. I appreciate that point. At the same time, one very important point I'm going to tell you now regarding this. See, you know, for example, although 100 people may join a company as a GET, you know, say maybe 10 of them are made team lead or something. Huh? And maybe two of them are made, you know, project manager out of 100 or something like that. You know, and one out of 1000 people may be made the unit head, you know. You will see like that. So, because everybody is carrying different type of backlog of uh, good karma, bad karma in their account. Just like in, in the company when you work, you, you are doing some, what do you call it, uh, you do some extra work, and then they give you incentives. And those who didn't do extra work don't get incentives. Similarly, some, uh, some men are handsome, some are ugly, some are rich, some are poor, some are healthy, some are sickly. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, everybody is differently situated based on the good and bad actions they have done in the past. They are just reaping the fruits, that's all. Exactly like you are all reaping your salaries now, uh, based on your performance. Our own performance has brought forth our situation right now. And our current performance will bring about a situation in future. Therefore, we should not make unhealthy comparisons. Uh, what others are having, what I am having, why I can't be like him. Or some like our Jacob was telling, we can redouble our effort. No, no matter how much you put effort, some people are always going to be ahead of ahead of us, and some people will be below us also. Yeah, 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 hmm. yeah. That is the people are stuck in like some people are stuck in money, etc. I am able to do meditation. I am getting to uh, lead a happy life, spiritual life. Huh? So like that, one can say, yeah. Compare yourself with yourself only. Don't compare yourself with others. Comparing yourself with yourself means what I have been doing last year and what am I doing now? Can I improve? Think about it like that. And everybody's situation is unique. God has put us in a rigid, just like you have a different type of model cars. Like that, God has given us different type of bodies. And our situations are unique. So by not comparing ourselves with others, if you compare also, it should be healthy comparison. Healthy comparison means you can learn from those who are better than you. You can help those who are in an inferior position to you. That is healthy. Unhealthy means somebody is better than me, I develop envy for them. Hmm? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, here Srinath has said, stay calm, think uh, what and why it went wrong and work on how could it be better. We need to improve with yourself. Yeah. Actually, we can do all these things, but ultimately, we know God knows best. Yeah. Krishna knows best. What, what I deserve, he is giving me already. Uh, he knows better than me. I am only seeing the present isolated from past and future. Whereas God can see the past, present, future and accordingly award everybody what they deserve. Yes, Jeet, go ahead. Jeet, Joshi. Yes, uh, so what happens is like uh, even what, what, what today family is comparing you and putting you like pressure on you because they are the one mostly like, you know, uh, like a hurdle in the spiritual life also. like uh, So you have to educate them. 
you are you can ask them one challenging question uh, jeet you can tell them the for example i have a certain face cut there are people more handsome than me there are people people who are more ugly than me also similarly there are people more fairer than me there are people who are more blacker than me there are people more richer than me there are people more poorer than me uh, there are people with a better economic status than me and some people are more lower so you can tell uh, the family members that you see everybody is put in a rigid situation and uh, even though one may make lot of effort you know there is something called iq also like mensa club people have a very high iq 150 plus or something but other fellows have less iq they cannot get into very big colleges huh? so just as iq is fixed our destiny is fixed so we cannot change it appreciably little bit progress we can make but everybody's situation is uh, based on what we have acted in the past so but at the same time if you work for 8 hours 9 hours and whatever you are earning you should know that that is the salary for your that's a reward for your work yeah. and uh, if you are going to work 14 hours 16 hours thinking that i will become like that person we only burn out our body yeah. we burn out our body we ruin our life yeah. there are people who have lost the good health yeah. there are people who uh, who have lost family family is broken apart because they are working 16 hours a day yeah, yeah. Yes. Also, he is uh, saying that our uh, Jacob says that he made some uh, spiritual effort um, with different things. The energy bliss coming uh, by the satsang of the Swarupa, he is feeling. Yeah, spiritual life effort is meaningful, uh, and our spiritual process is very simple. We chant Hare Krishna, and we follow the four regulatory principles: hmm? no illicit sex, no meat eating, no form of intoxication like drinking, smoking, drugs. We avoid, and no. gambling i i i told you in one of the occasions before give me we call it no gambling no illicit sex no meditating no uh, intoxication eh? then we avoid these four things and we chant hare krishna it it is a path for awakening love for god very easily very naturally so this whole uh, series of four things which we told you the para utkarsha sahishnuta you can see here is a tolerating the uh, progress of others eh? yeah and then see prabhu gives some examples of tolerating inconveniences in the summer kitchen he gives example mother has to cook even though it is very hot in the kitchen she is cooking similarly when you take a bath in the winter season in cold winter water is very chill eh? we tolerate the cold water mm. so in this way if a mother leaves the kitchen says i can't cook then nobody can eat at home similarly if you don't take bath you will be unclean mm. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas at the age of 24, uh, renouncing his wife and mother, and he had he thought all the living beings are suffering in this world. Let me take sannyas and go out and propagate this message and uh, save the suffering souls and take them back to Godhead. Hmm? So it's not a very easy thing, but at a very young age he uh, surrendered his life to God. Hmm? Similarly, Lord Krishna told Arjuna, "You should fight with Bhishma and others, though it is little uh, painful for your mind." because it is the duty of a chatriya to fight against irreligion adharma and establish dharma that is your duty arjun and if you do your duty that will lead to as you see below prescribed duties if you do that will give you knowledge jnana and the knowledge will give you liberation from all illusion and then eventually you will attain all perfection that's what he told and then focus on higher goal of liberation and overcome the duality of happiness and distress by tolerance then you go up uh, by this tolerance that's the result of this fruit of this and this verse is also connected to that please repeat this verse yam he na vyatayantyete yam he na vyatantyete purusham purusha purusham purusha rishabha purusham purusham purusha rishabha tama dukha sukham dhiram समदुख सुखम धीरम समदुख सुखम धीरम सोमृतत्वाय कल्पते सोमृतत्वाय कल्पते या सो ये लाल कृष्ण सेइंग समदुख सुखम धीरम इन सुख एंड दुख शीत एंड उष्ण मान अपमान इन विक्टरी एंड फेलियर इन प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस इफ समबडी नोस दैट दीस आर ऑल टेंपरेरी सिचुएशंस इन दिस वर्ल्ड आई एम नॉट दिस बॉडी आई आई एम नॉट परमानेंटली गोइंग टू बी इन दिस सिचुएशंस i am a atma spirit soul part and parcel of god 
and i will be going back to god after this body is uh, finished so in this way one keeps a equal poise nature without getting excessively disturbed he attains amrutatvaya kalpate he attains immortality he is saying huh? that one attains you see here uh, eligibility for liberation is steady if you are steady in prescribed duties then anyone who is steady in his determination for advanced stage of spiritual realization you can advance easily those who tolerate one can equally tolerate the onslaughts of distress and happiness hmm. so yeah these examples are given for our chit mahapuran arjuna so here is an example of a story anybody knows the story of haridas thakur you heard it huh? haridas thakur was a great devotee of krishna uh, he used to chant as you see here he is sitting and chanting in a cave so one evil minded man sent one very beautiful prostitute young uh, girl he told her that go and seduce this uh, uh, haridas thakur so that his character will be polluted and i can assassinate his character so he wanted to uh, spoil the reputation of this great soul haridas thakur so this prostitute went in the uh, night time evening time and she she told him haridas you are a young man i am also a young girl come let us go to the forest and enjoy each other very very well so haridas thakur said you see i am chanting hare krishna i cannot stop it now i have to complete 10 million names of god i have taken a vow so therefore he, he said once the uh, chanting is over then i will attend to attend to your request uh, i will i will hear you what you are saying right now i have no time i have to chant he said so she waited and waited and waited the whole night next day early morning the sun rose in the east then she thought now i can't deal with the situation then she left and went that evening she came second day again haridas thakur was chanting and chanting and chanting uh, whole night she waited and then third day she came she thought this fellow is going on chanting when will he chanting end hari krishna she thought on third day she was looking at him and also hearing the holy name hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari so when she has been hearing it hearing it three days by hearing the hari krishna mantra she became purified huh? and then third day when it ended the early morning sun rose she loudly cried and she fell at his feet and said oh haridas uh, i came to seduce you and pollute you on the order of one ramachandra khan he is envious of you and he want to spoil your character and uh, <clears throat> cause you disrepute disrepute in the society uh, therefore i came but now after having seen your joy and bliss in the chanting of hari krishna you know my polluted desires have gone away now i simply want to become a pure devotee you please accept me as your disciple and bless me and haridas thakur told her you know you give away all your wealth as charity to the brahmins eh? and other people and then you sit here in front of tulasi and you chant hare krishna uh, 3 lakh names every day and i will leave this place and go away because ramachandra khan is envious of me and he is always trying to create some trouble so i am going to another place so you become a devotee and that place name of the place is called benapol it is in bangladesh in india so <clears throat> i had gone to that village i came to know in that entire village all the people became her disciples she became a great devotee pure devotee every day she would sit in front of uh, uh, she shaved her hair and she gave away all the wealth sat in front of tulasi and chanted hare krishna you know three lakh names every day and she became a great acharya acharya means a great teacher of spiritual knowledge eh? and why i told you this see the tolerance of haridas thakur eh? what a great tolerance he was not uh, carried away by lusty activities eh? so he was having a strong strong desire to achieve the goal of going back to godhead despite all obstacles he could say no even though he was alone he could say no to maya and yes to krishna And even if one fails, uh, one should have the strength to get up uh, and uh, fight. Of course, he never fell. He was, he was strong. Uh, so in this way, in today's session, I shared many things. Quickly, I will show you the four uh, things I showed you. The first one we learned was uh, it's called Vega Sahishnata. Watch a Vega Manas Vega. Six Vegas I told you. Vega Sahishnata. Second one is called. Shita Ushna, this is Dwandva Sahishnata, duality. 
tolerate the dualities. First one is urges, second one is duality, third one is um, uh, opinion, tolerating opinion of others, fourth one is tolerating the progress of others, uh, and then uh, yeah, examples are given, and then we we can go back to Godhead if you are tolerating in this way. Ultimately, the goal of our tolerance is to purify our heart and go back to God and not waste time. Uh, whether you are in land or water, as the picture shows, learn uh, to have that equanimity. Then you can attain perfection in life. So there are two types of, uh, like here is a lusty temptations are coming. Or sometimes angry temptations will come. Temptations which arise our anger, provoking situation, or temptations that induce us with lust. These things will come in this world, but one should not fall down from one's position. And, but one should continue to be a devotee of God till the last breath. One should chant the Lord's name, study the scriptures, keep one's holiness and purity. Then one can attain perfection in life. Any questions? We have two, three minutes time. Anybody wishes to ask anything? Yeah, this is a very important thing what we discussed today, Jacob. Thank you. Because this is this very much fits in the modern day situation also. The world is becoming more and more challenging place. <laughs> so like Krishna is telling Arjun, the goal of tolerating all these things is liberation and attaining immortality, the immortal spiritual platform. So therefore, uh, this tolerance becomes easy, later on Krishna will say, by higher taste. Uh, when you get a higher spiritual taste, the lower taste can be given away. Uh, so like imagine somebody has a dry bread, you know, he has nothing else to eat. You know, he has to keep it. But if he gets a big plate of, you know, Mahaprasad in the temple with varieties of cuisine preparations, then he will give the dry roti to some beggar because he has got a higher taste now. Uh, similarly, in our life, we get a higher spiritual taste and the lower, you know, pushings and pullings, arising from these different things can be easily given up. Mm. So uh, Krishna told Arjun, Yes, you are. You don't want to fight the battle. You are feeling little pain, but you do this duty for the higher duty. You tolerate this lawyer, you know your pain, like that he told him. And it is true for all of us. We are all living in a very fast-paced world now. Life is very challenging now. But if you cultivate this equanimity and go on peacefully with our chanting and spiritual life, you know then we get more and more inner strength by Lord's grace. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. Now it is seven. And uh, I am trying to make a short uh, this kind of PowerPoint so that we will successfully complete it without having to rush through. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I also wanted to ask all of you, every one of you here, um, you know, uh, you, you all, do you have a contact with some mentor who is uh, guiding you? Uh, if you... Here he has got one very good point. Very much used, I get uh, tripped up so much by ego. It's getting where I am becoming more and more unshakable. Yeah, but I still get tested always. Uh, trying to do seva online on Facebook and stuff, it's very sexualized. Yeah, actually working with, uh, working with uh, online and internet, uh, it has a great risk. It's like fire. You have to be very careful not to get polluted by the pop-ups which come and the nasty YouTube videos which come. Uh, so we have to be very cautious not to pollute our mind because once mind is polluted, then senses, will, senses also will become polluted and we will lose sense control. Once yeah. you lose, we will be learning more about it in the future uh, shlokas of the second chapter. We'll be learning more about that. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask one quick question to all of you. Uh, besides uh, you attending my this particular class, do you also have someone available for person? I think our Ade Ogun was going to Kunti Mataji and Madhvacharya Prabhu and Bhagavan, correct now? Um, yes. Uh, um I connected with them. They actually um are just um coming back from India. So they're starting to um do a few more uh, events now. Okay. You are, you are coming to India? You already have come to India and gone? No, no. The, 
<laughs> where you spoke at in Silver Spring, um, with the community there, they went to India. And oh, they, they went to India. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they went oh. to India. Yeah. yeah. Okay, they when they come back, the festival. Yes, when they come back, you can be in touch with them. And Jit Joshi has said, I am watching other mentor of Hare Krishna is uh, Amog Lapu. I am most welcome, sir. Uh, Jit Joshi, you, you are uh, learning nice things. At the same time, uh, you are in which part of America, Jit Joshi? Uh, I'm from Ohio. In Ohio, do you have someone to guide you? Uh, no, not, not here. The town is too small for me, I mean, maybe in future. Okay. No, no, you, 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 are, you, are a, you are a student of uh, YSU, is it? No, no, no. It's a University of Toledo. It's in okay. a little park. Yeah, it's little on the north side, Michigan, near Michigan. I came to Columbus this time. From Columbus, uh, Ohio State University. From there, how far it is? It's close to Michigan, is it? I think, I think it's like a three hour, maybe. Oh, it's three hours from there. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. So yes, you, you, you will definitely come to the Columbus if you come over there. Okay, okay. Next time, I, I'll be coming in September. I will uh, tell Jai Krishna Prabhu to inform you. Huh? Okay, okay. I will definitely come this time, Columbus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come. Yes. And, and, uh, and uh, Jacob has said, yes, I have Rishi Vachika and the sages. Okay, and the more saintly and special friends are welcome. Himalayan meditation app. Are my sages, you start that if you have no answers. Okay. My mentor is God. He will take me all the time. So, GK. What is GK's name? GK? Gopalakrishna. Oh, Gopalakrishna. Okay, okay. Gopalakrishna, where do you live? Uh, I live in Houston. Yeah, in Texas. Oh. Okay. I came to Houston and I went to this thing, Texas A&M this time. Oh, it, wow. Yeah, it is very good university. Yeah. Uh, you are studying or working? No, I'm working right now. I just completed my studies around like four years ago. I'm working in right now as a software engineer in a HP. Okay. Uh, how far is the temple from your place? Uh, it is near, uh, I think around uh, just five miles, not five miles, four miles. I have two temples. Yeah. Oh, I'll go yeah. every week. Yeah. Okay. I, I can yeah. actually introduce you to one very good soul there. His name is uh, Anantheshwar Prabhu. And, oh, sure. Uh, he and his wife and uh, the two daughters, they are living close to temple. And uh, he is the one who organizes my programs when I come to US, uh, Houston especially. So oh, nice. uh, I will tell him to uh, get in touch with you. And Jai Krishna Prabhu oh, will sure. to Anantesha Prabhu. Hmm? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from otherwise? Which uh, part of India? I, I, I born and brought up in Hyderabad in, uh, in India. Okay, okay. I go to Hyderabad every month, third week I go to Hyderabad. Oh, wow, nice. When you come to Hyderabad, and whenever you come, you bring your parents to Abid's temple, Iskana Abid's temple. Hmm? Yeah, sure. Sure, we'll, we'll sir. Yeah. And Jacob is saying, unfortunately, there is no temple here, so I had to build my own shrine. Hello, if anyone in Pennsylvania. You are in Pennsylvania, Jacob? Okay. I'll, I'll keep in mind, yeah. And Pennsylvania, there is a Gita Nagari, very nearby to Pennsylvania. Uh, Jai Krishna Prabhu, you can put Jacob in touch with Gita Nagari also. There is a, a mm -hmm. Prabhu there. It's very nice, very nearby. Yeah. Thank you. And Nitya Prabhu is from Harrisburg? Yes, Prabhu. I remember yes. meeting, meeting you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Alec, Alec is connected to Baltimore Temple, I believe. Or Baltimore or Washington or DC? I think. Prabhu, uh, DC Temple. DC Temple, yeah. Okay. You know, Prema... Uh, our, Prema Ah, Prem Prabhu, okay. And what about Upen? Upen is Upendra or Upen? Thank you. Thank you. Upen and Lara. Lara and Upen, which place you all come from? Oh, Jacob has connected, Jacob has given, and Yash Patel has given to Jacob, yeah, Pennsylvania, and this thing he has given. Very good. That's very nice. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Ajink, Ajink, Ajink Prabhu and Jita Mondal Prabhu, you all are from which place? 
Upen not available, I think. Upen and Lara and Ajahn and Jita, Shravan. Any of you? Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. So, Shravan? Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah, I'm from the Delaware. Um... Ah, you're the same, Shravan. I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Very happy to have you. Very happy. Thank you. I know, Shravan. Shravan, I know very well. Okay. Jita Mandal is connected to this thing, it seems, Harrisburg. Huh? Prabhu, you know, Prabhu? Nitya Gopal Prabhu, you know Jita Mandal? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Very it's good. Harrisburg, yeah. Very happy to know that. Yeah, very nice. Okay. And Ajin? Acha, Lara to... Lara is, I am from Latvia. Oh, oh. Latvia is in which, which place, Latvia? It's not in US, no? It's in Europe. Europe. So, Lara, how did you get... Uh, it's in Europe. How did you connect with uh, this course? This... Uh, mm, Be a Perfect Yogi course. Some, someone gave you the contact. Very nice that you could connect. Oh, you started reading Bhagavad Gita. Okay. This is... A, you have been for a few classes? Okay, you searched, is it? Okay, very nice. So you Jake, attend? Uh, is Prabhuji, it? Uh, even I was uh, reading it and then uh, I came across Instagram uh, ad or something. Then okay. uh, so, so they're like, hey, you can join this WhatsApp group. And I'm, and I'm super glad that, you know, I was able to. Oh. And, learning. and where do you live, Yash Patel? Where do you live? Uh, in Georgia, uh, in South, South of America, South, south okay. side of the U.S. Is it close to Atlanta? Georgia Tech University is in Atlanta. That's different, huh? Yes, uh, same, same place, same place. Oh, really? Yes, yes. I came to Atlanta. I came to Amarendra Prabhu's house. You know Amarendra Prabhu? I do not. But the reason I got into Gita is like I went to a grocery store one day and okay. uh, they were distributing uh, Gita. Uh, at first, I was like, no, I don't feel good just taking Gita and everything, yeah. um, you know, for free. Um, but... Uh, you know, initially, uh, I was like a bit hesitant on taking Gita. Okay. But then I took it. And then six months later, I started reading it. And I was like, okay, I think this is something that more people should read. So yeah. I went back to that same person. And I was like, okay, here, I'm, I, I want to donate $50, $60. Because yeah. I want you to keep doing your, your job, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, you sh more people should get uh, more hands-on uh, in terms of Gita than not just me. You know, it shouldn't be limited oh. to, to myself. Correct, correct, correct. This One is only time. after I read like the first, uh, you know, chapter. Yeah. I had this thought process in my mind. So I'm I'm on, um, you know, chapter four right now. I try to read just one slope per day. Great. Uh, That's very great. Wonderful. But, did you, uh, yeah. did you, did you get the previous lectures in this series? Yes, yes. I attended all, I'm attending all the sessions. I only missed one so far, but uh, even then, like, I, I went back and uh, watched that recording for that session. So, Good. You have a great discipline. Amazing. Which place you belong to? Um, so, I was born in India, Prabhuji, in a uh, uh, Vaishnava place? family as well, uh, okay. in Gujarat. Uh, but then I came here when I was uh, 13 or 14, 14 years old. Uh -huh. I yeah, so we don't eat onion, garlic and everything even at home, but, uh, you know, uh, sometimes... Yeah. Uh, you know that mind is always. I think. I think you are from Ahmedabad. I think correct. Surat Swami. Surat. 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 Okay. Okay. Because yeah. I saw your name Patel, I thought you must be from that side. I thought. Okay. Very happy. You are really sincere, and uh, you will easily get enlightened more and more as you keep coming. Thank you. Yes. Yes. That's the goal to learn for, learn as much about Gita as much as possible. So. Yeah. Your uh, study is over. Now you are working. Is it now? Yes. Yes. Prabhuji, okay. Yes. I'm working in IT industry uh, in okay. Atlanta. Okay. Our Jack Krishna will inform you when I come to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, are you planning on coming this year? Every, I always come because Amarindra Prabhu is my very close friend. I also come to the Iskon Temple in Atlanta. There is one Vedasar Prabhu there. I yes, know. yes. I've attended. I've, I've, I've been there two, yeah. two, three times. So when I come there, I will tell Jack Krishna, will give you the schedule. He will inform you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We'll, I'll, we'll I'll try. Uh, when I come there in September, I'll try to meet you personally. Yes, yes, I'll definitely come. You don't, you just let me, uh, if I know your schedule, then I'll definitely come to meet you. Yes. Thank you. And uh, what about uh, Saurabh Karanke? Saurabh? Saurabh? 
Okay, and then Srinath Anand Gangi Shetty is from this place, Srinath. And some of them might have left also because after the session is over, they might have left, I believe. Hmm. Hare Krishna Guruji, I'm from Boston. Oh, is it? You have been yeah. to the temple, Srinath, uh, the yes. Boston temple? Yes. yes. Oh, that's great. You know any devotee like our president of the temple, our Vanamali Pandit? Prabhu I or... might have met, but I am not sure about the name. Uh, but I was in touch with Giridharan. Oh, Giridharan, you know. Oh, I know very well. I know Giridharan very well. <laughs> That's very yeah. good. He's very good, sir. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, you joined a few sessions before? I was there from beginning, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You... In between, I had to travel to you know, India. So, in between, I just... Missed, I think, one or two sessions, but other all, I've been most of the sessions I'm here from beginning. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, very nice that you, you have been joining. And do you find it uh, easy and easy to grasp and interesting? Yes. 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 Guruji, I've always been interested in this one. Uh, we do have a temple back in India. So, I always like to learn as much as possible, yeah. as Vedic culture as possible. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Nice, that's nice. Yeah. Thank you. And Ajin, Ajin K and Panda, are you still there? Ajin K or Panda? Okay. Yes. Ah, tell me, Ajin, about yourself. Uh, I'm in White Plains, New York. Oh, you are, you are in New York. You know the Brooklyn Temple? New York? No, I just moved to US. So oh, recently? Moved. You are a new student in uh, some college in New, uh, new York, is it? Uh, no, I'm, I'm working here. Are you working? I got a transfer. Yeah. Okay. So, Ajin, I will tell Jay Krishna Prabhu to introduce you to one Arjun Ananda. Uh, Prabhu is staying in Brooklyn. And uh, you, will, you will be very happy to visit the temple. It may not be very far for you, I believe. Uh, you are put up in New York only, isn't it? Uh, in White Plains. Okay, it's, White Plains. Uh, half an hour from the city. Yeah. Okay, half an hour from the city. Okay, okay. Where are you from? Otherwise, in India? Uh, from Kerala. Okay, okay, okay. So you have been also attending many of the sessions. Uh, yeah, uh, all of them. All of them. Very good. You find it interesting. Yes, it is uh, very yeah. helpful. Because most of the classes I come six to, I come for one hour and I immediately push off. Today I just wanted to meet all of you and just get to know each of you. I want to my one of my desires is to see that uh, besides me just speaking one hour in a week, you all have someone also whom you can meet one on one and ask questions personally also. So I will inter our Jack Shampoo introduce you to Arjuna and put through email and phone number to you. And he is uh, one of my very dear mentees staying in Brooklyn. So he can be of help to okay. you. Hmm? Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jack Shumpu, anybody I missed out in this, those who are here? Um, open, I think. Open only we could not meet, I think. Open. Yes, no. Bro. Yeah, no, no problem. Open, we will meet next time when he, when he comes. We can talk to him, I think. Yeah. We have covered all of them? Yes, yeah. Prabhuji. Yeah. And Jacob, you said it right. <laughs> das means servant. So, Radhe Shyam Das means, you know, we are servant of Radha and Krishna, the, uh, the Supreme Lord Krishna and his feminine counterpart, servant of uh, the divine couple, we call. Hmm? I will tell about that more when we come in one of the future classes. So thank you all for extending your time today and uh, being with me. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.